Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and I'm back here with Elite Dangerous. Today I'm going to have a look at one of the engineers, in particular Felicity, and I want to upgrade my FSD. Now I'm going to have a look here at what materials I actually need, and then I'm going to head out and collect them, and we'll see all the various locations that we actually need to go to in order to obtain those particular materials. Now, collecting materials can actually be fairly time consuming, so it's always good to know exactly where you need to head to. Felicity here actually needs meta alloys before you can unlock her, and you can get those in the Maya system from Daniel's Progress. There you have a little place down on the planet there. So, buy one of those and bring it back here, and you're then about to unlock uh, Felicity. So, what I want to do is get some increased range on my FSD, and that is the second option here. Unfortunately at the moment I've only got the rank 1 or the grade 1 modules that I can actually use and we need some atypical disrupted wake echoes, some chemical processors and a bit of arsenic. So we can pin that blueprint and that will then be available for me to have a look at again later on whilst I'm playing. So the first thing I wanted to get was the atypical awake scans. They're quite easy to get, so I thought I'd do the easy things first. Just head to near any station, hang around outside and wait for an MP ship or indeed a player ship to jump away. They will leave a high energy FSD wake and then as long as you've got a wake scanner fitted and that's essential, you can then go and scan it. Now you don't get the data for every single time you scan one of these. In fact, I didn't get one there, so you do have to scan a few of them. And the more you scan, obviously, the more data points you will actually get. Now, you can get other types of data from these FSD wakes, and they will all simply go into your inventory, so you'll be able to use them at a later date. But we want the atypical wake scans at the moment, so I'm going to have a look at a few more here. Eventually, they do come up. You just need to be a little bit patient and just keep trying. I think it works out to something like 1 in 4 or something like that, so they're not too uncommon. So, like I say, you can get these around any station, and whilst you're at it, you can also point your ship towards some other ships here, the MP ships or player ships, and simply do scans of them and you'll get other types of data as well. The only problem is that the data storage in your inventory is still fairly low. You can only take 200 of these before it fills up. And there you can see my first atypical disrupted wake scan. And I spent a while around here getting a few more of these before I went out to collect some of the other materials. Now the other thing I needed was some chemical processors. Now, you can get the uh, chemical processors from haulage ships in unidentified signal sources, but I've found that they're not all that common there. The other place to get them is in resource extraction sites or nav beacons if you get involved in a bit of combat. Now, not all ships drop them. It seems that they drop quite rarely, in fact. But at least here, you can have a little bit of fun with the AI and the combat. When they do drop, you simply open up your cargo hold and you can collect them up. You can also use limpets as well if you've got a large enough ship, but I've only got a small a little viper here, so I've got no cargo space and no limpet collectors either. So simply I just open the cargo hatch and pick up the materials I want, which then goes straight into my character's inventory. So I'm here in a low resource extraction site. If you go to the higher ones, you'll find that the NPCs, I think, drop slightly more uh, materials. A bit of funny timing there, it actually looks like I've got the new uh, weapon effect, but that's not me. That's an NPC fine right behind me, and I think they actually clipped my ship here in a moment. Yeah, there you go. So, like I say, I'm here in a low resource extraction site, and for now, they seem to be more than enough to drop the materials I actually need, although it does take quite a while. If you're up for more of a challenge, then head to the regular extraction sites, or even the high or hazardous ones. The AI has gotten much better in all these locations, so you'll find it much more powerful and probably more of a challenge there. But like I say, I do believe that the ships, the higher ranked ships, drop a few more materials. And if you're anything like me, you may find that you much prefer flying these smaller ships, which are a lot more manoeuvrable and much faster to boot. And with the new AI, they actually make combat that much more easier as well. Flying around in the larger ships, the slower ships, can be a little bit difficult from time to time. So at least until I get some engineer upgraded weapons, as well as wait for the uh, bugs to be fixed in the NPC weapons that are doing instant killing, then I'll be sticking to the smaller ships for a while. Now I've found that Diamondbacks are pretty good candidates for dropping the chemical processors. They also seem to apply to ASPs as well, they seem to drop them from time to time, so if you're after them, they're good ships to actually target. 
All in all, I spent nearly two hours in these various resource extraction sites and unfortunately only managed to find around about six chemical processors. So even though they're graded as a fairly common item, they don't seem to drop very much at all, at least not here, and when I drop in at the unidentified signal sources, I haven't had much luck finding many of them there either. Now, sticking with the Viper wasn't the only thing I did. Also, I went back to Kashpoos, picked up my Vulture, and did a bit of fighting in the rings there. The Vulture really is one of my favourite ships, and its manoeuvrability really does help when it comes to combat. Now, one tip I do have for you is don't just collect the particular materials you're actually after. You can ignore the completely common ones, but from time to time you'll find that Grade 3 and Grade 4 materials will drop from the NPCs you're actually attacking. Make sure to pick those up, because you never know when you'll actually need them. The really common materials are either not used by the engineers, or they're so easy to actually find that you'll be able to get one at the drop of a hat. Like I've said before then, with the engineers, many of the game elements are now feed back into the engineers themselves, so it's a very different game loop to what we've previously experienced within Elite. Looking around at the forums and on Reddit, from time to time you will see players just simply say, just play the game because you will find the resources you need whilst you're playing. Now whilst I'll agree that is partly true, it's actually not completely true because some people simply don't like to drive the SRV down on the ground, so there's just some materials they're never going to find. So whilst you don't actually need to grind for specific materials, at least you don't have to if you don't want to, you can just play the game. If you do want certain materials, you're going to have to do activities you might not particularly enjoy doing. And that really is the downside of this whole material collection thing. So the other material you're going to need for FSDs is arsenic. And this, so far, for me at least, seems to be the hardest one to actually get. If you're having trouble yourself, do come to this planet here. It's called Kansan. And whilst there's not absolutely tons of it here, you will be able to find some in a relatively short amount of time. But... The trick is to know how the discovery scanner works, or the wave scanner rather, in your SRV. And here I'll go into a little bit of information exactly on how to use it. This image here is from the website wavescanner.net, and it will teach you exactly how the wave scanner works. So as I click on the mess aside right here, you'll see a little thin bar appear at the bottom of the wave scanner. And that is the mess aside right's uh, signature. And if you listen here... That's what this particular resource actually sounds like. So as you're driving around, the whole purpose is to use your SRV wave scanner to target the resources that you actually want. So if I turn this one off, we can have a look at what the outcrops look like. And there you've got two thin bars, and they have got the little clicking sound. Okay, and then there's the outcrop too as well. All of these you can find arsenic within. They're not just limited to one particular one. They've got a chance of dropping in all of them. Now this sounds a little bit like the mess aside right. And again, if we add both there, you can see what happens when two different signatures emerge on the wave scanner. And we'll listen to that as well. And now we'll add the outcrop in, the first outcrop. So you can see you have multiple signatures there, as well as multiple uh, sounds. So the rest of the sounds and the rest of the signals you can actually ignore if you want to. This will give you the information you need to actually find the types of outcrops or the types of mesocides, right, that you actually need. I think you can actually find them in metallic meteors as well. So if you've never really used the wave scanner in any particular detail before, this will hopefully help you a little bit. So I spent about an hour around here in the SRV and ultimately managed to find five bits of arsenic. So it does take quite a significant amount of time and effort to actually find it. If you're the type of person that does spend a lot of time just driving around on planets, I guess eventually you're going to come across arsenic, and apparently it can also be found in mining as well, although there it's also rare as well. So if you're seeking out particular resources, you're going to find it's going to take you a significant amount of time to actually get what you want. And really, I think for quite a few people, that is one of the downsides for the way the engineers is currently working at the moment. But if you've been playing the game a lot and shooting NPCs because you enjoy shooting NPCs and driving around on planets because you enjoy driving around on planets, then chances are you're going to have a lot of materials that you actually need for the upgrades. So as with all things with Elite, it really comes down to how you play the game. Ultimately then, you can see here, this was probably after around about 20 minutes or so of driving around on the planet, I come across my first bit of arsenic, and this was in a mess aside right. Just like I recommended with the NPCs, 
do pick up some of the rarer materials you find here. The vanadium here is, well, it's not particularly rare, it is something that is very useful. It can be used in the FSD injection to allow you to increase your jump range, so picking up things like that is very worthwhile. The other stuff, like tin, is pretty common, so if you want you can leave that behind because you're always going to be able to find some of that when you want to come and collect it. With enough materials finally collected then, it was time to head back to Felicity and try out for these FSD upgrades. Now, collecting all these materials represented about two to three hours of actual gameplay. Your mileage may vary on that though, of course it does depend on going to exactly the right locations and it does depend on the luck of the RNG as well. So you might be able to do this in an hour, you might be able to do it in a half hour, or like me it may take you two to three hours. But either way it does represent quite a time investment. Now let's have a look then. You can see that currently I've only have access to grade one uh, upgrades. So uh, let's go for the FSD upgrade. It's going to be a grade one. Hopefully I've got enough resources to actually go for a grade two one a little bit later on. It depends on how much we need in order to unlock this. So let's preview the outcome. The top three there are the uh, potential, potential drawbacks to the upgrade and the bottom one is hopefully the benefit. Now a grade one upgrade here to the FSD isn't going to give me much of an increase to the jump range. But let's have a look at what the outcome is nonetheless. We've got to do this before we can unlock the next one at any rate. And fortunately for me, that landed up more on the high end. So a 4% boost to the mass, or decrease on the mass, should I say. So let's apply that. I'm not going to try it yet again. Not until I've unlocked the grade 2 items at the very least. Let's have a look then at what that's put my jump range to. I believe originally in my upgrade, I forgot to actually check before I landed here, but it was around 31.5 light years. So let's see what we've got now. So 32.1, around about a half a light year increase, or about 0.6 light year increase. So nothing significant, but it all adds up. Then again, I wouldn't blame you at all if you felt that was a too small increase for the rather large amount of time investment there. Now, to unlock the higher grades of upgrades from uh, Felicity, you need to keep crafting modules. Eventually, you'll unlock the grade 2 ones. I think you need to about craft about 3 or 4 items to do that. If you go to the other engineer that does FSD upgrades, on the other hand, Elvira, I think you can increase reputation with her by selling your uh, discovery data. At any rate, that's something I'm going to look at another time. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and today I'm having a look at the Engineers, which was released onto the live servers late yesterday evening. Now, there's a whole bunch of new things introduced with this patch. You've seen quite a few videos that I've released during the beta period covering some of that, but today I want to have a look at the Engineers themselves, which are gated behind certain requirements you need to meet.